Susie Quattro, welcome to the Juno Files. Why, thank you. <laughs> nice to be here. Now, your new book is called Through My Words. And this, is, I read your book over the weekend, and this is very interesting. You take the reader through your life, through the lyrics of your songs. And I was just wondering, how did you, now with your repertoire of songs, it's got to be in the hundreds, maybe thousands. Yes. Was it hard going through each one and saying, this is the one I'm going to use, this isn't? It, oh, I mean, it was, it's been on my bucket list for a long time. I, I did a poetry book a few years ago through my eyes. Uh, and that was also something I wanted to do for a long time. And then during lockdown, I thought, this is the time to do it. So I went through my entire catalog and I found, I, I did, like I said, I tried to do it chronologically because it kind of made sense, you know, and you can see the development. You can see the different things I went through. You can see why I wrote it. You can see where it was truth, where it was fantasy. And um, I picked my, my favorites, basically my favorite, something that meant something. And then I uh, had to find pictures to go with them. So I had my daughter help me. She's quite good at that. And as it did with my poetry book, things kind of fell into place without meaning to the most amazing thing that happened in this book. And I'm not going to pretend I did it on purpose. It was an accident. It was the beginning picture with the first song, which is Brain Confusion. And it tells you I wrote this way back in Cradle and blah, 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 blah. And it's got a picture and the caption for the picture says, Notice the bass player standing in the shadows, right? That's right. And the very last song in the book is Let It Die. Right. And I have a picture of me as a shadow. And it says, about to go on stage from the shadow to the spotlight. So I topped and tailed the book with shadow. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 and I, like I said, I didn't do that on purpose, but very often with me, things fall into place. I mean, I mean, just, just to finish that story, because it happened again just the other day, we're now starting to record the uh, next album. We got all the songs ready. And um, we were coming to the ending of the writing and my son had, had a couple of riffs and I had them on my computer and I'm listening and I'm, I had a set of lyrics that didn't fit anywhere. And it was what we wanted to call the album. It just didn't seem to, go anywhere and I was as I was listening to this ending of the writing season that we were doing because we're on like song 16 or something and I was looking through my lyric books to get an idea and this lyric that we couldn't place fell out from the lyric book it fell out onto the table and I started to sing it and it was immediate as if as if I was singing the words that were supposed to go to that side I just went what and it's now the title track and the name of the album, which was our initial conception. But I wouldn't have thought of it unless it had fallen and gone splat. <laughs> yeah, crazy it's stuff. Serendipitous, I think, is the term for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you write, you tell a reader that you write songs, well, I want to say constantly in your mind. You, you think of a title or you hear, you hear somebody say something and it seems to form a song in your mind. Well, to tell the truth, it sounds big headed. It's not. I've always talked poetically. Mm -hmm. I seem to say things. I'll go, and I'll go, oh, it becomes either a title or a song. I mean, I, I just wrote down one just the other day. I was, I was talking to somebody on the internet, and I, and I, and I, 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 he just said something silly. And I said, oh, that's you. How do you know that? I said, well, I see people. And then I wrote, I don't see facades. Why see facades when you can go straight to the soul? And I went, where did that come from? So that, I know. So that's like automatically, I wrote that in my, I, I put down ideas and stuff. And that, that's a lyric. Why bother with the facade when you can go straight to the soul? That is a lyric. Amazing. You know? Yeah. And I'm always doing this. I'm always saying unusual things that don't go together you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, like the way per people write too i mean i mean authors write you know and um it seems oh, I, I will i will zoom in um 
I am unashamedly a people reader. I don't mean to be, but I I do go straight to the source. I do. I just go boom. I can be sitting with you for like five ten minutes, and I can tell you all about yourself, and you don't know how I got that. After the interview is over, I'm going to ask you about me. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm going to do it after the interview, though, before. <laughs> yes, I, yeah, because you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, <go ahead. laughs> yeah go ahead. he's a phony. No, he's not. <laughs> actually, actually, I read every book that I interview people with. And um, you, one thing you say that's constant in your life, though, is that you were, were you always lonely or feeling lonely? Yes, and I and I think it's it's a combination of things. I think it's one thing is that I just never fit anywhere. I'm, you know, you call that a one-off. I mean, it's great that you're a one-off, you know, because mm -hmm. there's nobody else like me. All of us are one-offs in a way, but I I was a real one-off, and I couldn't fit there, there. There, never knew where I fit. So consequently, you're sort of a loner, you know, not in a bad way, and also being so creative makes you kind of lonely in the creativity. You're always, you're always weaving pains and hurts. And the, you know what I mean? It's, it's the artistry. It, it, it's, it's being a one-off and also the artistry put together. And I think if I didn't keep that part of me alive, if I tried to fix that loneliness or fix that sensitivity, just ridiculous sensitive I am sometimes, vulnerable, very naive. If I tried to fix all that, I don't think I would be the artist that I am. So I'd rather just be that naive little girl that I probably always will be in many ways, not in all ways, but in many ways that kind of keeps this blossoming for me. Now, how, now you, you talk about, um, let's go through your early life. We you know you were, you were from Detroit originally, I guess still from Detroit, uh, but you're now, you've lived in London for, I want to say almost 40 years now. I know I came over here in 71, but even though I've put down roots here, obviously, um, I've been in the same house since 1980. The, the, my heart and soul is in Detroit. It always will be, even though my kids are born and raised here. And, you know, it's uh, you, your roots don't leave you and they shouldn't leave you. There, there, there's a part of Detroit that lives inside me always. It's an edge. There's an energy. You know, there's just a certain something. It's something in the water there. One of your songs in the uh, in the book, "Shine My Machine," talks about <laughs> Detroit a lot, and um, so you do. It shows that you have that love for for your home city, yeah, which I is do. fantastic. You, this book also takes you through the time when you were in the Pleasure Seekers, and you know that, and then into uh, your other groups, and then finally on your own. But and people, I'm a. I'm going to say this, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but over here in America, you know, of course, you're still known for happy days. You're still Leather Tuscadero to a lot of people. You're still uh, the duet uh, stumbling down. You're still. Sure. Uh, sure. Big uh, hit. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think you're ever going to, I mean, I don't think anybody's ever going to forget you for, for your time on happy days or that song. And I but, don't want them. <laughs> Yeah, but over in over in London though, you've had, I mean, and you've had an effect on American people as well. Joan Jett copied your look. Have you seen the documentary? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Well, I mean, this 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 really does a great job of exploring all these things and going into it. And um, I mean, I was I was the first, so there's no other way yeah. that you can tell that story. You can't rewrite it and tell it a different way. There wasn't anybody. I did not have a female role model. So I had to kind of trust in me being me that, you know, what I believed in would happen. And I just stayed. The thing I do was stay true to myself. This is why, well, there's no guarantee you're going to make it. Nobody can guarantee that. Right. But but I, I wanted to make it on my terms. I wanted to be who I am and not to be a carbon copy of anybody else. And this is what, this is where I succeeded. And it doesn't matter if it was Susie Quattro in America that broke the mold or the Tuscadero because they're the same person, mm -hmm. if you see what I mean. <laughs> you know, even though I was acting a role, it was a very much a lot of me in that. Mm -hmm. And so even though they didn't take me right away like they did everywhere else in the world, after that, it just opened, they went, oh, 
oh, there's a girl, and oh, she's playing a bass, and then it became okay. So however you get there, you get there. But um, now America is going ballistic on the documentary, and um, they're rediscovering me, I'm happy to say. I must have done over 200 interviews on Zoom there with CNN and Entertainment Tonight, Variety, Rolling Stone, Billboard, you name it. I've done it, and they've all said, wow. Well, so it's, you, like, it's, you, it's, like, it's like they've discovered me. I said, hello. I've been here all the time. <laughs> but it's okay. It well, happens. So you, it happens. You, you've done CNN, and you've done, you've done uh, um, several other shows that you mentioned. However, the Juno Files is going to be the show that makes you. I can guarantee <laughs> this, this little bitty podcast that I that I do. But I, again, that's that's something which I was like, "Oh, right, we get we get to have Susie Cat, uh, Cat Quattro." I'm sorry, but anyway, you go through the pleasure seekers. Uh, I guess that was one of my phones. Yeah, I can't do anything about that when that happens. Go on. <laughs> hey, it's just like having a cat pop up, you know, in the middle of an interview or something. So, um, but. Your favorite song that you've included? Um, I mean, you have Cat's Eyes. You got you got Ego and the Night. These are early songs and stuff, which have a real boogie sound, right? which is consistent throughout your whole whole career. Which is your favorite? So hard to say. Mm -hmm. Oh God, Heart on the Line from the current album is just wonderful. Uh, sometimes I'll be letting go. Oh God. No, one, but the one that is me, 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 me. Well, Lonely is the hardest I love to. Um, no Soul, No Control from the new album is very much who I am. I got a hold on to me. You won't, you know, and I even recite the words on stage when I do the song. You can't, do, you can't take away my soul. You can't break me because I'm in control. You can't take my heart, my mind. This time I won't let go. You can't take away my soul. No, 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 no. And if you're going to say a song that's me, that's me. I tell you, the, the song that, that um, I looked at the most is the song you had talked about when your, uh, your first marriage was breaking up. For some oh, reason, that, that, was, that was touching. It's my top three. You mean Free the Butterfly? Yes, uh-huh. It, it's in my top three. Um, there's a few songs, you know, that you write. And they, they just come out and it's like somebody's singing it in your ear and you're right, that's what that one did. And every word was how it should be. And, you know, I remember coming down into the front room and playing it to give him a clue because I didn't know what to say. And, I, and he, he, he got it, but he didn't want to get it, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, it's actually a beautiful, a beautiful goodbye song because it gives you hope that you're going to keep going, you know. You know, we shared the best and all you're saying goodbye, but it's not a nasty goodbye song. It's a, it's a very pretty dear John letter. I'm flying away now. You know, my time to go. Yeah, yeah. we gave it a try. It didn't yes, we had the best, you know. Now it's time to put the pain to rest. So I said it again. See what I mean? <laughs> exactly. You talk, in, you talk in verses, yeah. And you think I in do. verses. Yeah, I do. It's kind of like it's kind of like what I do when I'm writing stories and stuff, you know. But it's it's not nearly to your level. Um, you talk about you got to talk to Elvis on the phone because, and you've been asked this question a hundred to a thousand times. <laughs> <It's You know>? okay. <laughs> well, you say so in your book. Is that you know I've been I've told this story a million times. Yeah, sure. I mean, who isn't interested in that? You know. <laughs> he wanted to meet you, but you were too busy. I love that. <laughs> I just, and I remember the moment, I just wasn't ready. You know, it takes a lot of guts to... No, no, I wanted to meet him. I just thought, well, I don't need, like, three hits, three hits, three hits. I thought, eh, let's just wait for another year or so. I'll be back. Then he cast me. I just wanted to be more on an equal level. I wasn't afraid to meet him. I just thought it was a little bit premature. That's, well, no, what I that's, what I meant. that's what I mean. It takes a lot of guts to know that about yourself. That, I did know. Yeah. And oh, well, yeah. It, always, it always seems like you knew what, what you wanted to do. You know, I, um, knew, I knew my path. That, that's been my sort of um, strength through my whole life is I always knew where I was going. You know? I just always had, I had my path from the first time I saw Elvis at uh, five and a half. And, you know, and I've told that story too, but, but it's true. See Ed Sullivan show, you know, and 
um, my older sister was screaming, one of my older sisters, she's nine years older. So I was five and a half, she was 15, just the right age to be screaming. And I was, and Elvis came on and I looked at her and I thought, a little girl I said, why are you screaming? She was screaming. And then I looked at the TV and I went into it. I remember like it was yesterday, he was doing, don't be cruel. I went into the TV and light bulb and it said, I'm gonna do that. Done. It's so crazy that young, but it just went, it was like a lightning bolt. Oh, that's what I'm going to do with my life. How many gold records have you had over in London, over in England? I take it you're in London right now. Yeah, I, well, I live out on the countryside in Essex. Um, I've sold 55 million records and I've got a lot of gold and silver and platinum just so all over the walls in the dining room, my bragging room. <laughs> <laughs> But you talk it's about 56 years in the business now, you know. I mean, that <laughs> long time, I know it's a I, lifetime. I was trying to, I was thinking, my gosh, I didn't realize that you know she has been around that long, but she has, uh, she really gotcha. survived, yeah. And, um, now Russia, you talk about in your book going to Russia and how <laughs> thrilling that was. It was, it was, it was, um, For, you were the uh, first artist to go to Russia, right? America, Glasnost was just beginning, so. We saw it as it was in its birthing pains of Glasnost, you know, mm -hmm. and we were the first act to go there. So they tried to do everything right, you know, but we saw, we saw the old Russia, you know, where you, you go to the shops and there's pictures of things in the windows. The things aren't in there, pictures. They were selling sides of fat in a market. They give you a menu in the restaurant with 25 pages and nothing's available. You could have caviar and golden champagne and that's it. And this kind of smashed chicken. So we had our own caterers, you know, we even had to bring towels and soap. So, you know, don't go there. I mean, it was, it was the most incredible three months of my life. And I had my kids with me because we were there for that long and I wouldn't leave them here. So they came, I'll never forget that tour as long as I live left left a lasting impression. So much so that when I got back to my home here, I walked in the door and I said, oh, this is decadent. <laughs> it had that big of an effect on you. Yes, Amazing. it really did. Now, you mentioned your kid, your daughter is now writing music with you. I think your son is no, too. My, my, my son. My your son, son is writing music with you. I'm sorry. Your son he did is the last album. Did the last album with me. That's the first time we worked together. The just huge critical success. And uh, we're now, we've done the demos. During the lockdown, we wrote the next album because they took up the option. And we're now going to start recording property next week. And uh, we've come up with 16 songs. Never thought that was going to happen. We didn't plan it. It just, it just really was an accident. He wanted to write with me. And I, and I said, okay. So we were having fun, then all of a sudden, it got really serious. It started to be an album, and I went, whoa, what's going on here? And he was able to push my Susie Quattro buttons. All right. Now, yeah. you talk about spending time in quarantine. How have you been spending time in quarantine? I have been busy, 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 busy. I refuse to let it come on top of me and get depressed because my, I, I am a poker player mentality, okay? I've sat at the table of life, here I go. I've sat at the table of life and I've had my cards dealt to me and this is what I'm gonna play the game with. Fantastic. But what else are you gonna do? Exactly. Why get depressed? What are you gonna do? You, you know, you have no control of the situation. So I'm sure I hit the wall a few times, we all did. Everybody has meltdowns and all that. You know, and I cried, because my husband and I were separated for two and a half, nearly three months. He got locked down in Germany, I got locked down here. So that was real hard. Um, and I had a few meltdowns, you know, I'm, but I'm the walk through the fire kind of girl. And if, if tears came over me, I would just let them come sob it all out and then it's done and then you get on with the rest of your night you know and you should you shouldn't hold those in those are that's important to let out you know how you're feeling exactly. yeah but it's not not doing the shows that's really like oh my god i don't know when that's going to start again but that is a bit surreal because i've been doing that for so long so not to have a schedule in my hand and my wheeling bag you know i'm not quite sure who i am but 
But I kept very busy. Like I said, I've written the 16 songs. I've written and put out that book that you're talking about through my, right. through my words. Mm-hmm. Um, there's now a movie of my life because of the success of the documentary. So I've been working on that. And I'm now starting my next book. Okay. So give creativity, a, give a... as it says on the book, creativity saves me. Always has done. In the darkest periods of my life, if I can write a poem, a song, or whatever, as long as I can do something, if I can channel these emotions into something, I can survive. Well, fantastic. Susie Quattro, thank you for being on the Juno Files today. Thank you so much.